Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to introduce how we can set up the connection between the Omron NA series HMI and Omron CJ2M series PLC. This example comes from one project recently I did. If you are going to use the Omron NA series HMI and Omron CJ2M PLC, I highly recommend you read the detail of this video. From my personal experience, I used the Omron NA series HMI before, and I also used the Omron CJ2M PLC before. But when I set up the communication between these two devices, I still got a trouble on that communication and the setting. So I would like to share this experience. The Omron CJ2M PLC need to use the CX1 software the actual program software that is the CX programmer, the software. But Omron's NAHMI is using the Sysmac Studio software. So they are not using the same software. Basically, this is two main group software. If you are not quite familiar with the Omron system, let me quickly explain what the mainstream of the Omron HMI and the PLC. So this is the Omron Automation main website. So from these products, you can find the machine automation controllers and the programmable logic controllers we call the PLC. Actually, you do not need to care about this name, but when we talk about the machine automation controller, if you click in here, this is the mainstream, a little bit high-end controller. So for example, the NX series and the NG series. Basically, they are the middle and high-end controller. Basically, all those controllers has its built-in Ethernet IP communication. Also, it has an EtherCAD communication. So you can use the controller, control the drive, or control the valve bank. It's very convenient for the motion control. That's why this series controller is named Machine Automation Controller. And for the PLC, basically, this is a little bit of traditional PLC from the Omron. For example, the mainstream controller for the middle end, that is a CJ2H or CJ2M. For a lower end, basically we call it CP1L or CP1H. This depends on the, what the size of that. For the lower end, basically there's a C, CP. A little bit older version, that is a CX1. And talking about the HMI, for example, if we click this uh, human machine interface. One known thing from the Omron HMI, all those HMI for each series HMI, they are using their individual software. So they are not compatible. If you are using the PLC series controller, for example, CP or the CJ controller, might be the Omron will recommend you to use the NB series for middle and the lower end, or use the NX series HMI. If you are using the machine automation controllers, for example, NX102 controller, or NG, those middle and high-end Sysmac Studio platform controller, it's highly recommend you use the NA series HMI. The key reason that's because from Omron side, so far there are two mainstream platform for PLC programming and HMI programming. One is the mainstream Sysmac Studio. One is the CX1. Inside CX1, the main PLC programmer software that is CX Programmer. This software that is a two main software platform. Going back to this picture, so as we talked. If you are going to use a CJ2M PLC, it's recommend you can use the NX HMI or NB HMI. Why we are going to use the NA HMI? One reason is this is one retrofit project. Existing PLC that is the CJ1M PLC that is a little bit old style. That PLC doesn't come with a built-in Ethernet IP communication. So in this project, we upgrade the CG1 to CG2M. The CG2M, it has a built-in Ethernet IP. So we can use this Ethernet IP port to connect the wall bank or robot or other HMI using the Ethernet cable. And the reason why we are going to use the NA HMI, one reason is I used this NA HMI before. Also, I checked the NA series HMI definitely support the CJ2M PLC. Another reason, the software to program the NA HMI 
that is the Sysmax Studio. As we know, the Sysmax Studio is a mainstream software from Omron. If we move ahead a little bit, maybe after a couple years, the NA series HMI and the Sysmax Studio can stay for a long time. So that's why in this project, for upgrading their very old one HMI from other brand, so we upgrade to NA HMI. And the PLC, we are going to use a CJ2M. From Omron menu, definitely NA HMI support CJ2M PLC. However, in this project, I definitely has a trouble on setting up the communication between this NA HMI and the CJ2M PLC. The key reason that's because from this HMI setting up this window, this HMI has a two ways to setting up with the CJ2M. One is from this communication driver side here, from this job list, you can select the Ethernet IP. Also, it support a little bit old style, this fins. This fins specially come from the Omron communication protocol. So it called Ethernet fins communication. And because this PLC project, it come from CG1M, basically we just upgrade. We upgrade the PLC only. So the program and existing symbol I basically do not need to touch that. However, their existing symbol is using the address and the comments. The tags doesn't have the tag name. So when I set up the Ethernet IP communication, I definitely got a trouble. And then I realized I should use the Ethernet fence communication. However, that time I got a trouble on the network address here. So if you call the Omron support or call the local support, they will recommend you to set the network address to one. They think one will work. However, from this brand new Omron CD2M PLC, it doesn't come with the network address inside. You have to use one software it named CX Integrator and hook up this PLC routing table to activate to download this network number one, this address allows the HMI to read this network number one with this PLC. So using this fins, you can use the existing symbol that absolute address. For example, W address H address holding area and the data area D address. I will demonstrate both way after. So to set up this communication, there are two manuals I highly recommend you read the detail. One is the NA series device connection menu. If you search from Google, you can see this menu, NA series programmable terminal device connection user menu. After you click in, and you will find this menu, programmable terminal, NA series device connection. And from this section four, connect to a CJ series PLC, it definitely explain how to set up the connection between the NA series HMI and CJ series PLC. Connect via the Ethernet fence and connecting via the Ethernet IP. However, the limitation on this menu, it only explained the HMI side. It doesn't explain the PLC side, how we can set up. What the difference between these two connection? The key difference between these two connection, that is this. If we go to this connecting where the Ethernet IP fins, if we scroll down, you will see here registering the variables. For the fins connection, it shows register variables as a global variables on the CX programmer. But for the connecting where the Ethernet IP, if we scroll down, you will see register global variable with CS programmer here. The variables must be registered as a network variables to use the CIP message communication with tax. So you need to select network variable. That's the key difference between those two connections. So let me show what the difference, okay? So currently in my hand, I doesn't have the PLC at HMI anymore because we set up the HMI and the PLC on site. But when I was on site, I tested this two communication way. It definitely works. So in this video, I only do the offline demonstration for you. It definitely work if you are going to connect to the actual hardware, okay? So firstly, let's open this CX programmer after we install the CX1 software. That's specially for the PLC programming, CX programmer. Okay, let's set up the new PLC project. 
So here, I will name CJ2M PLC. Okay, device name. And from this drop list, I will select CJ2M and don't forget, select the detail type. So in this project, I'm using CPU 33. It has a 20K steps, okay? And from this controller, it has a USB port and Ethernet IP port. For the first time, probably you can use the USB port to download the IP address. And once you download the IP address, you can connect the Ethernet IP, okay? I will quickly demonstrate. So let's assume this PLC has an IP already. So we will select the Ethernet IP. And don't forget, click this setting. So from here, you need to set the IP address. And from this example, I will set the PLC IP address to 1.11, okay? And if you set the IP address as a 1.11, so don't forget, from this PLC, it has a three deep switch here. And from this node number, the node number represent the IP address here, at here. From this example, this CPU has a 1.11. So from this node, we need to set as the hex number 11. 11 means B. So we need to set this node number to B, deep switch. Keep in mind here. And unit number represent the CPU unit number. I will show this unit number in the software after. So keep in mind that the node number deep switch need to match with the last number from your IP address of this CPU. So, okay, so we set this IP address to 1.11. Okay. okay, we set up this project. And from this IO table, that is the hardware configuration portion. If we double click. So from this built-in port here, this CPU has its built-in Ethernet IP port. So by default, the unit number is zero. From my project, or especially try to explain a little bit different, so we specially set this unit to number five. So click this change unit number five. So after a change this unit number five and download this PLC, keep in mind, at the front of this PLC, as this unit number, you need to switch this deep switch to number five. I want to specially use a different number with this network address so we know how it works, what the actual number showing here, what that means of this network address number. Okay, so unit number, I said number five. So you need to switch this uh, unit number address. And here, I also need to set the unit number five. Okay, after you set here, you can double click. So if this is the first time you connect this CPU, personally, I recommend you use a USB connect to this uh, CPU first. And then you come here, you set the unit number, also double click here, you can set this uh, CPU IP address, 192.168.1.11. And this subnet, we set 255, 255, 255, okay? And after you set here, if you are using the USB cable connecting with this CPU, so at here, don't forget, click this transfer PLC to unit so you can download this CPU setting to this controller. Set the IP address to this controller. And after you set the IP address to this controller, if you recall, we double click here. So you set this IP address at here that tell this software try to connect this IP address with the online PLC. Okay. So this is IP setting, let's quickly go through. Now let's talk about some settings allowing the HMI, NAHMI to communicate with the PLC tag. The key things comes from this symbol. So firstly, let's talk about how to set up the connection using the Ethernet IP using the tag name. So we are talking about the Ethernet IP tag name first. If you are going to use the Ethernet IP, for example, I can create the W address or H address. So for example, let's insert one symbol. So W10.0. So let's call that just the Ethernet IP EIP. 
start. If you are going to use the Ethernet IP way to connect a HMI, you need to set up the name. Keep in mind the Ethernet IP here, we are talking about the CIP message communication. So you have to set the name here. Also, you need to check this net variable and make sure that's selecting the publication. Click OK. And let's quickly set up another one. For example, the H address, for example, H500.0. We can call that EIP underscore flag. And keep in mind, we also need to check this network variable. OK. And if we are going to program here, for example, let's program one simple logic here. That first one, that's the, the W address. And we can control this H address, H. OK. So W address control this H address. Both of them, they has the name, the tag name, EIP underscore start, EIP underscore flight. This is just a name. But you can see there's one tag here. This means those tags are network variable. If we go back to the symbol, if we double click here, we will see we check this net variable. And then from the HMI side to set up the connection, the tag connection with this PLC, let's go to the Sysmac Studio. Okay, Sysmac Studio. Open. Let's create a new project. So let's call that CJ2MNAHMI, okay? So as we can see, the Sysmac Studio support from the controller-wise here, so it support NG, NX, and the NY series controller. This is the middle and the hand controller. And for the HMI, if we select this HMI here, because we are going to set up the HMI project from the Sysmac Studio. So the Sysmac Studio only support NA series HMI. Keep in mind here. Okay, let's create this project. I select this HMI. And here, if we quickly record, for the HMI IP address, I will set up 192.168.1.10. And it's target PLC, that's 1.11. Okay, and we are talking about the first way where the Ethernet IP using the tag name. Okay. Let's firstly go to HMI settings, and then let's go to TCP IP. This place is used to set the HMI IP address. This 1.10, that is a NAHMI IP address. And if you try to connect the actual hardware HMI, so you can go to HMI, click this uh, communication setup, and select this uh, Ethernet connection with a hub or if you direct connect to the HMI, you can select this direct connection. And here, you can type in the IP address and click this test. If that is the first time for you to connect this HMI, so you can go to the HMI system setup and type in the IP address to the HMI and set up the HMI IP. And then you can type in the IP address you are going to connect and click this test. Okay, this is the basic IP address setup for this HMI itself. Then let's set up the PLC target. So from this drop list, to set up one external device connection, so from this device reference, so we right click, click this add external devices. So from here, I can rename it external device, that's the EIP. CJ2M. Okay. If we double click here, you will see the connection setting here. You will see the communication driver. So we have uh, two options. We are talking about the CIP Ethernet connection. And from this job list, for this NA series HMI, it supports CJ, NJ, NX, NY, and CK3 controllers. Okay. So we are connecting the CJ series controller and its IP address, our target IP address is 192.168.1.11. Okay, 
and after we select this CIP Ethernet, this selection, and set up the target IP address, then we need to set up the tag. The key thing is the setting up the tag. So from this variable here, this is the PLC tag. So you can manually set up the tag here. For example, if I'm going to manually set up the tag, right click, click this new. And from this name here, keep in mind here, the name, we must match the name from the PLC side. For example, here, we set up the tag in named EIP underscore start and EIP underscore flag. Okay, we need to set up the same name at the Sysmac Studio. Here, we need to set up the same name, EIP underscore start. And here, that is the PLC actual address. That is the W 10.0. And next one, that is the EIP underscore flag. Those names must match and the same as the PLC side. And here, that's the H500. This is manually adding, which is really annoying because you need to exactly the same as uh, the PLC side. Another way, that is the automatic import. So firstly, I can delete this. You will see here that import variable and the date type information from a physical device. And or here, import variable information from a file. If we click this uh, import, so you will see it won the file in name the CX programmer dot cxt okay so that need us to go back to the plc side here so firstly i will save this project and then let's click this file save as so save as your project to cxt this format okay select and click save and after you save as the cxt so you will find you export one file in named CXT. Okay, here, let's go back to the HMI side. So from the HMI side, let's import that CXT file. Find out this directory and uh, select this uh, CXT file and uh, click the open. Okay, it shows, let's import. It come from the global variable. The global variable here, that means the global variable come from the symbols. So the Omron, it also have a local variable come from these symbols. So going back to this uh, Sysmac Studio and select them and click this uh, import. And after you import, let's go back to this variable here. So you will see the system automatically import. This procedure basically working as this way. After we set up the symbols with this network, this variable, selection with this network variable selection here. And once you save as to a CXT file and import to this Sysmac Studio, it only sort the variables with the network variable that selection. So it only sort these two variables here, those two tags here, okay? And after this, we need to go to the variable mapping here. And keep in mind, this is the PLC tag. For the HMI, it actually using the variable come from this columns here. So from here, we can select and right click, click this uh, create device variable. So it will create the external device like this. It created this prefix here. So they will create this external device, this name as a prefix and plus this EIP, this name here. So when we actually use this tag from the HMI side, for example, if we go to HMI, let's quickly set up one HMI screen. If we are going to connect these tags, for example, let's drag a big lamp here. And from this big lamp here, uh, click this properties. So from this expression here, let's type in that tag name. So that tag name has the prefix external so you will see this drop down list we can select this uh, eip start or flag for example if we select this uh, full name that is this so that is this you might see this prefix name is too long because that prefix name come from this so when we set up the variable go back to this variable mapping the hmi actually is using this line rather than this line 
So when we create from the left side to the right side here, for example, I can delete them. And when we create from the PLC tag to HMI tag, we can select this create a variable with prefix. And from this job list, we can select none. So after select none, or you can define the specific prefix. For example, if I call that CJ2M, so as a prefix, after I click OK, so you will see it has a prefix CJ2M as a prefix, and then the actual tag name here. Or you can delete them, or you can delete them, use the exact same name so that the PLC tag and the HMI tag the perfect match. I click this create a tag with the prefix and specially select this none. So after this, your HMI tags and the PLC tags, they are the same. Okay. And then let's quickly go to the global variables. So the global variables is the actual variable management platform here. For example, we create those names and those names for testing. And eventually we use the PLC tag name and the HMI tag name here. So for those tags, if we do not need that, we can delete them. So this global variable is an actual platform for managing the PLC tag and the HMI tag. Okay, this is the basic procedure for setting up the EIP variable from the HMI to the PLC. The key things come from this. From the PLC side, when we create one tag, you need to select the net variable. Okay, so this is the first way. Now let's talk about the second way, Ethernet fins address. Maybe you would ask why we need to specially talk about the Ethernet fins, this address way, the second way. Likely the Ethernet IP tag name has been perfect enough the problem comes from your existing project. So like my project, in this project, I'm upgrading my existing PLC project. So that project, all the tags and the variables, they don't have name here. So it only has the address and the comments. If you are familiar with the CX programmer or you did a couple projects, you will realize sometimes the tag with the name is not actually very convenient. So most of the style what I saw or some project I did, actually I use the WOH address direct and use the comments only. For example, at here, let's insert. So next one, let's create a W20.0 and I create a comments here. So we are talking about the fins. So start. And next one, Let's create a next one. So H address, for example, H510.0 here, fins, flag. From this CX programmer, the tag do not need the tag name here. It only need the comments. I saw a lot of project, they are actually not using the tag name. They only use the comments and this absolute address. So if we go to the program here, so let's program this style. So W20.0 and H510.0. You will see the com is showing as a blue color. This is the difference between the tag name and the tag common. Here, I would like to mention one thing. So you will see what the difference between them when we program, it doesn't show the actual difference. One key things come from one setting. So from this tool, from this option here, I specially set one thing before, the letter info. By default, you will see the setting is like this way. Name, show checkbox, show the address if name empty and the comments here. So this is the default setting. By default, it will show like this. The W address on shown at here. So when you program, especially for this CX programmer, using the traditional way, W address traditional way, if the letter logic doesn't show the W address, which is really annoying, because this is the default way, some people doesn't like that. Or if you don't know how to set up to showing up, 
the W address, people will like this style. So using the W address and the comments address. So using the W address direct and show the comments here. But if you're familiar with the CX programmer, at the first beginning, you can go to the options. You can go to the letter info and select here, show the address, select above to force to show the W address. Okay, so then you will see the W address showing here. But most of the programmers, they don't know this setting. That's why most of the programmer for using the CX programmer, this software, they will prefer use the, the W address or H address with the commas rather than using the tag name. So if your project doesn't use the tag name, just to use the comments, all those tags in the existing project, there is no name here. So in this scenario, all those tags, they don't have the name. They only have the absolute address. If we are trying to use the NAHMI to set up the connection using the absolute, you have to use the fins. The fins support the absolute address direct. Okay, so let's go to the Syspec Studio side. This is Sysmax Studio side. So we just show the EIP, let's delete it. And then let's set up again. So from this device reference, right click, click this external device. This time I will name Fins CJ2M. Right click, double click here. So here, this is the PLC target. Series select, we will select this CJ. Okay, same thing. And this time, the communication driver, I will select Fins Ethernet. And after we select this Fins Ethernet, you will see right side change here. It doesn't show the IP address anymore. That's come from one typical style from the Omron Fins connection. And the known thing is that is, uh, if this is for you the first time to set up this network address and the node address, you don't know what does it mean of them. If we go back to the menu, if we go back to this device connection menu, we go to the connection where the Ethernet fins connection here. So let's go down. Let's try to check out what does it mean of them. Okay, so let's find out this page. We will see how funny of this explanation here. So network address, network address, set up the network address for the fins. So you will see this explanation doesn't explain anything. So you still don't know what does it mean of the node address and what does it mean of the network address, right? So let me explain for that. So going back to this picture, firstly, let's explain this node address. So this node address that come from the last number from your PLC IP address. So from the Omron side, basically the fins that node ID need to set the same as your last number from your IP address. For example, for my PLC, its IP address is 1.11. And note, as I explained, we need to set a B. The note, that means 11. So from the HMI side, for fins connection, the node address here, we need to set the decimal 11. So this need to be match. Okay, so for fins connection, the HMI doesn't have the IP address anymore. It's only use the node address and the network address. And then let's talk about the network address. So what does it mean of the network address? That actually stuck me for two days when I was on site. Okay, the network address, if you search a menu from Omron, they will talk about network address. Basically, the CPU will use the number one as a default. But in my project, my controller, it doesn't come with any address from this controller. It's empty. You have to manually set up the network address. But things is, if this is the first time for you to set up this connection, you won't know how we can initiate this network address to this controller. The key answer is, we have to use the CX integrator software and use this PLC routing table to activate this local network. Okay, this is the key answer. Let's go to the software side. So network address, we need to initiate the PLC side to initiate the PLC as the network address number one. So to set up this local network number, the CX programmer doesn't work for that. 
we have to use another software. So let's go here after we install the CX1 software. So let's expand here, Omro, under here, you will see the CX1 folder. Click this CX1 folder. So you will see this is all the software from this CX1 package. So we will find one folder named CX Integrator here. Let's double click. So this is CX Integrator software. It's a specialty software to set up the PLC network or the series network. To check out the detail, you can we find out this directory from here, right? And then you will find other than this exe, this execution, this icon, you will find this manual and online help. So if we double click and find out this CX integrator explanation, you will find this software is specially enabled or reading the PLC network and series network configuration. Okay. Using this CX integrator, we can set up that network address. Okay. When I'm recording this video, I don't have the PLC and HMI on my hand. So I worked on site and set up. But I used this software set up the PLC when I was on site. So I only has one screenshot. But to figure out this process, I highly recommend you find out this directory and open this CX integrator, this operation manual. And after you open this menu and name the CX integrator, this menu, operation menu, and then you'll find out the section three routing table, setting the routing table. So find out this section 3-2-2, creating the fins local routing table. The main idea using this routing table, you can use this routing table to set up the network starting routing table, select this fins local, keep in mind fins local, and we will find this page. And if you read from the PLC, upload the setting, you will see the actual unit number. For example, in my case, my CPU unit number is number five. And after I upload, you will see here is highlight. And then you will find here, the left side represent your controller's connection port. And unit five, it has an ethernet IP port. And at here, you need to right click this unit icon and you need to set up the network ID like this. So you need to add one SIOU here. And after you add SIOU, you, and then you can set up this local network number, number one, like this way. You will see, you can set up this. And after this add, you need to transfer this setting to the PLC. This is the basic idea. So let's go back to the software. So firstly, we need to set up this connection, network communication setting. So select the correct CPU type. For example, in my case, I need to select the CJ2M and to select the CPU, okay, to match my actual hardware. And then select the network type to Ethernet. And keep in mind here, I need to set up my PLC IP address to allow this software to find out my actual hardware. So my CPU IP address is 1.11. OK, click OK. And after this, you click this uh, walk online. I'm not connecting the actual hardware. So keep in mind, you need to click this uh, walk online. OK, this is the, the actual screenshot when I was on site. So after you click the online, so it will pop up this screen, walk online with the Ethernet. And then it will ask you setting the routing table. You click this uh, start routing table and then it will open this screen, PLC routing table. From here, you can follow the manual, what we talk about. So the manual from this section 3-2-2, from this CX integrator operation manual, okay? And the key idea is after you're opening this PLC routing table, you'll find out the actual unit number from your controller, okay? So you go to the options, I'm using the offline just to do a demonstration. So from this tool, if you go online, you're just directly clicking that starting routing table. If you are working offline, so you can select this starting routing table and select the fins local, keep in mind. If you are working offline, 
So I highly recommend you click this. Transfer from PLC. You firstly upload all the existing setting from your PLC. So after you transfer from this PLC, you will see the actual setting from your PLC. For example, in my case, I was using the number five unit and it's showing my actual hardware unit number. Okay, and then from this unit number, you right click, click this insert CPU SIOU as shown in the manual. Click, and then you will see this is your actual CPU unit number, this unit number five. And here, this is the local network number. You click OK. So using this way, you activate this CPU with one local network number one. This is the offline setting. And after this setting, and after this initiate, we go to the options, click this transfer to PLC. Keep in mind this, transfer to PLC, you download this setting to the PLC. So going back to the actual screenshot from my actual project, so after I clicked in this starting routing table, so because that is already online, so the software reading my actual hardware setting that time, that time, the default CPU doesn't have this local network, okay? And from this unit number five, I know my CPU that is a unit number five. And from there, I right click, add that SIOU, and then I add this local network number one. Activate this blue bar here. And after that, go to the options, transfer this setting to the PLC. And after the transfer, this CPU will initiate this local network, the network number number one address. And then from the HMI side, so the HMI can use this network address number one, talking with the PLC. So this is the key setting. The node number, that is the last number from your PLC IP address. In my case, that is 11, 192.168.1.11. And this network address, we need to use the CX integrator to initiate that network address number, okay? So after this setting, we set up the physical connection. And then let's go to the variable. That is a PLC variable. So right click manually, let's create one variable. For example, my PLC address, that is a W20.0. And because we are using the fins, fins only care about this actual W address. So here, if I name another name, ABC, for example, so this ABC doesn't match with the PLC that common. So because now the commons is named the fins underscore start, it doesn't care about this commons. It only care about this actual address W20.00. So from the HMI side, so it only care about this name. This name doesn't care anymore. We can name other names, okay? This is a manually setting. We can also automatically import. So let me delete here. So going back to the PLC side, this time let's save the project first, and then let's save as, still save as this CXT. Let's override this. Okay, we save as the CXT file, okay? And then go back to the Sysmac Studio, go to here, we set up the fins connection, and now let's import. Import that CXT file. CXP file, open. And this time you will see, it actually reading all the tags you can import. So from this case, we are actually using these two tags for testing. So it, those tags has a commas, and this name, the system automatically add this name here. So if I click this import, so we will see from this variable here, this is the actual W and H address, the fins, this communication will really care. And this name is just a given name, set up a bridge connecting the PLC tag and the HMI tag. Now, if we go to the variable mapping, so we'll see this is a representative, okay? This is like a bridge. And this area, this is the actual tag for the HMI. So if we can set up this HMI here, right click, click the variable with a prefix, so we can select none. So 
for HMI, we're actually using this tag's name. When we import the tag, the system automatically give a name here. When we connecting the HMI, the HMI has its tag with this name. So basically, when we connect the tag, we know this tag, what that represent. It represents the W address 20.00, and this tag represents H510. Sometimes when we using the actual name, so when you connect the HMI tag to the PLC, you don't know which tag I need to connect, especially when you browse. When we go here, when we actually, when we go to the expression here, you really hard to know what the actual name you need to connect. But for the physical address, it's easy for us. For example, in this case, we know, oh, this indicator need to connect the W20 that tag. We know this tag directly represent the W20.00. Okay, this is the second way. Quickly record, we go to the connection here. We select the fins Ethernet. So this network address need to use the CX integrator to initiate that number one local address. And this node address that represent the last number from your CPU IP address. Okay, and then you can use the import import tag. So the system will automatically give a name here. You can also rename that. For example, let's delete this variable. So we know this name represents the address. The name can have the underscore, but cannot have the dot. So the system automatically transfers this style. Okay, so this is the second way. This is the fins connection. So let's do a quick wrap up. To set up the connection between the NA series HMI and the Omron CJ2M PLC, we know they are using the two different software. For NA, it's using the Sysmac Studio software. And for the PLC side, it's using the CX1 software, actually that is the CX programmer software. And to connecting the tag, there are two ways. For setting up the Ethernet IP, it only uses the tag name. So from the PLC side, we need to check out the symbols with the net variable, the checkbox. And then we can import the tag, okay? The second way, using the directly W address, H address, or D address, so we select the fins Ethernet, the selection. So we need to take care of the network address that is using the routing table from the PLC side. We need to initiate this local network number. And this node ID 11 represents the last number from your PLC IP address. So when I was on site, I tested the both way testing the CIP Ethernet way. Also, I tested the FINS Ethernet way. Eventually, I used the FINS Ethernet. That because if I selecting this uh, CIP Ethernet from the PLC side, I need to set up all those tags with the network variable. The name also has some format. For example, it cannot have the dot. Uh, you have to use the underscore. But for the comments, it's pretty free, like this style. But for the tag name, they have some format requirements. So it's not quite easy to create or add a name for all the HMI connection tags. That's why eventually in my project, I use the directory W, H, or D address to connecting with the PLC. All right, that is this case, setting up the Omron NA series HMI with Omron CD21 PLC. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.